the Los Angeles Chargers 2022 draft recap. And I tell you what, for a team that has Justin Herbert in this division and he's on a rookie deal and he's lighting it up in a very transcendent first two seasons in the National Football League, the Los Angeles Chargers continue to get better and better. And look, the offseason was huge for them, adding J.C. Jackson, adding Khalil Mack to the defense. And now you can add Bryce Callahan inside that slot and that nickel, which will allow J.C. Jackson to play the outside. It'll also allow Asante Samuel Jr. to probably get the start on the opposite outside or they could start Bryce Callahan out there too he could play either of those positions and then they go out in the NFL draft you know what they do they load up they bring some interior help for Justin Herbert Zion Johnson round one pick number 17 offensive lineman out of Boston College he more than likely will project to be placed alongside Rashawn Slater and I tell you what that's a good security blanket right there to protect your franchise quarterback that's probably going to reset the contract market here in a year or so yeah, the biggest need for me for them was just that addressing that right side of the offensive line. Uh, whether they want to keep Zion on that right hand side and moving over to the left, I don't care what they do. They just added more depth to this team. Uh, you kind of shuffle some guys around if you want to. Like this was the need they needed to address. There weren't many other things. Like they've done a great job these past couple draft cycles, these past couple free agency cycles of addressing a lot of needs. Like it was kind of just get the guard and then find out whatever else falls at that point. I know later on in the draft, you know, looking at round three, you bring in JT Woods, a safety out of Baylor, like that move a lot. And then honestly, in round four, I loved this pick. We <laughs> talked about this one. one. Look, Isaiah Spiller. I I still love Isaiah Spiller. I understand he didn't test well. I get it. But the dude is way better than what you're ever looking at just in terms of a 40-yard time. Like the six foot, 217, the guy can dance out there on the outside. Fantastic footwork in the middle. He's a receiving back like not just that, like, if you want to have Austin Eckler on the field, great. If you don't have Austin Eckler on the field and you want to sub him out with someone, Isaiah Spiller can be that number two on this team, and the offense doesn't need to change. Like He doesn't bring the same explosive level, but in terms of running backs on tape, you're going to have a hard time finding a better running back on tape than Isaiah Spiller. Like I said, he fell a little bit because of his of his testing metrics. Like I said, you bring in a willing pass blocker, a guy who can work both as a running back and also as a receiver to be that number two because Joshua Kelly, um, Justin Jackson no longer on the team. Uh, doesn't uh, I think it was uh, Larry Roundtree is also on this roster too. Yeah. They don't have a ton of options behind this. So to bring in someone with such a high upside with Isaiah Spiller in the fourth round, I was a massive fan of this pick. Well, you know, I think it's also a good security blanket as well because, you know, for Austin Eckler, he's dealt with some soft tissue muscle injuries the last couple of seasons. And his they- hamstring literally ripped off the bone a Dude. couple of years ago, which I, that just, he be GB shivers up their You've spine. You've ever I can't your imagine hamstring? That. that hurts, but just hearing, oh. ripping the hamstring off the bone mm-hmm. is, nah, that's good. pain inducing just right now talking about it here. But I think mm-hmm. Isaiah Spiller probably, you know, we talked about Zion Johnson, you know, offensive linemen don't always get the credit, you know, for NFL success. You see running backs, quarterbacks having all the success. You we don't talk about offensive linemen until they make a mistake. Lineman. Exactly. I mean, you see it like, you know, when a guy gets beat for a sack, okay, hey, that guy, you know, he's responsible for the sack. He's terrible. But it's like a lot of the glory plays that happen with the yeah. offense. Thank the offensive linemen for that. The big hoggies deserve some you love. Win in the man, trenches. If Justin Herbert doesn't have time, the Chargers aren't a good team. My favorite pick was the Isaiah Spiller pick for them. I think Zion Johnson will come in. He'll start right away. He'll contribute. Obviously, you have Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. And look, I, you know, we were even yep. saying in the mock draft process building up to it, hey, you know what? I wouldn't be shocked if the Chargers, they had a cornerback and Derek Stingley. Obviously, he went a lot earlier than maybe the Chargers were anticipating. That didn't work there. out. That didn't work out as well, which goes to show like mock drafts. We have no idea. It's uh, the draft is a crap shoot in a oh, sense, yeah. but we even had them taking uh, a receiver at sometimes too. And they're like, Oh, why would they take a receiver? They have Josh yeah. Palmer and Jalen Guyton. And here's my premise here with the charge. And look, and I know charge fans are going to watch this. They're probably going to catch this on wildfire. You know, those guys have a lot of potential. They have impact potential there. Oh, but those guys are widely unproven as true. Number three guys. They have to step up in order to do it because, look, you have Mike Williams locked up on a three-year deal. Keenan Allen, there's going to be some questions about when his contract is up and what you're going to do with that, especially when you have to pay Justin Herbert fully loaded. You do add Gerald Everett, though, at the tight end position. You can't go wrong there. But in my opinion, I still think they need a true solidified number three. And these guys, Jalen Guyton, Josh Palmer, maybe they can become that. I think they could be. No question about it. Like like I said, these guys are unproven as number three. So is every rookie that comes into this damn yeah. draft class. Like all these guys, we got to find out what you've got. And if they think they really, truly do have two guys that could be great in Jalen Guyton or Josh Palmer, go for it. Because these guys have had flash. They just probably need more opportunities. But if the draft would have fallen to where someone would have been in their range, hey, like, yeah, he is a true upside style player in a very wide receiver deep class, then it would have made sense. No one was saying you need to reach 
for yeah. a wide receiver. Justin no. Herbert doesn't need that. He's got plenty of weapons already. But if you're trying to keep up with the Mahomeses and trying to keep up with the Russell Wilsons, where they're adding tons and tons of playmakers to these guys, it would have made sense if you want to give Justin Herbert another weapon. No one's going to say no just to giving Herbert more options in the passing game. Uh, so like I said, if the draft would have fallen to him, I could see it. But like I said, this is by no means us saying Guyton and Palmer can't progress to be that number three. I hope they do. I hope they go out there and ball out. It's one of those things. But like I said, if the draft would have fallen, we could have seen this take place. Well, you know, for them too, they had that round one pick and, you know, they added, they didn't have a round two pick in this year's NFL draft, but going down yep. the list a little bit too, round six pick number 195, Jamari Salyer, offensive lineman out of Georgia. Look, Georgia had 15 dudes drafted in the 2022 <laughs> NFL draft class. there. They had a strong, obviously, rushing attack. They had a strong offense, very strong defense. So maybe this is a guy that could potentially play some offensive tackle for them in the future, maybe on that right side. I know that's a question. They add Jasir Taylor, DB, out of Wake Forest. I'm a big Wake Forest guy. Wake Forest always has some dynamic playmakers at the skill player positions. There's that. Mm -hmm. But then round seven, pick 260. This was interesting. Xander Horvath, he's a fullback out of Purdue. The Chargers going with a fullback in this offense. I, I don't see what use there would be, but I imagine he'll probably be a special teams guy for him. Most more than likely. I mean, look, it's we kind of see some of these offenses where they love to bring that fullback in there. Just give yourself another rusher, another another uh, run blocker. I know Kyle Yuschek is so important to how the 49ers want to operate now. The uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers they'll bring in um um Derek Watt, or you can also now bring in Connor Hayward if you want to get that same kind of role. It's never a bad option where you can bring in just that extra run blocker if you're trying to punch something, especially when you don't have a running back who is a massive, like physically imposing guy. Like if you want to look at Isaiah Spiller or Austin Echo, like Austin Echo, pound for pound, might be the strongest dude in the NFL. Um, yeah. Like I know he, the uh, <laughs> God, who was who do we used to call Muscle Hamster? Uh, it was, who uh, was Doug that Barton. running back? Doug, Doug Barton. Barton, like. Yeah. He would be the new version of Muscle Hamster, just given how yoked he is. He defies for his size. gravity, though. Austin Eckler does. He does the one-handed pull-ups and stuff like that. I know. That. He's a, he's a freaking machine, stupid. man. That's he what I'm is. saying. Like it's it's one thing to be strong for pound for pound. But when you're still trying to meet in the hole, it's third and goal on the two, and you got to punch something in. It's not a bad option to have a little bit of extra girth back there behind you with an uh, with a fullback. I could see him making moves. Probably like I said, more of like a, a special teamer kind of guy. Like I said, give him a little bit more options. Another wrinkle in the offense. Imagine some 21 personnel with Austin Eckler and Spiller on the on the field at the same time together with Justin Herbert. Double Texas angle routes, things like that. I mean, they Good can luck get very a linebacker. One guy can run a swing route to the flat, a bubble, or, or an arrow to the flat. The other guy can run an angle route. I mean, Just wear like your Nikes crazy. if you're a linebacker. You're going to be running around the field all day. Good luck. It'll be a track meet. But if you're a Los Angeles Chargers fan, let us know what you thought about the L.A. Chargers 2022 draft class down below the YouTube comment section. Make sure you, you like and hit that subscribe button as well for more daily NFL news content and coverage here at Pro Football Network.